Hello and welcome to this orientation for Math 191 for the spring 2024 semester. My name is Peter Willer. I'm the teacher of the class and I have some students here with me. And what we're going to do today is go over how the class has been set up for students uh, and what you need to do to get a great start in the class. So uh, what we're looking at here is the DVC homepage. And so from our DVC homepage, there's a Canvas link up on the top. And everyone who's a registered student in the class should be able to go into Canvas and click on our class, Math 191, Section 1289. And so then you would, uh, this would take you to this home page, which hopefully you can now see. And on the home page, there's a link to the syllabus. And there's a Zoom link, which you can use anytime you're trying to meet with me on Zoom. This is to my Zoom, basically, office space. So if you're trying to visit me during my Zoom office hours, uh, then this would be the place to do that. Or sometimes I'll just set up an appointment to meet with a student outside of class to go over some issues, and you'd have this link here ready to go to, so that you can meet with me. So then we, uh, we have some basic things I've set up for students on the Canvas site that help students get going in the class. So let's begin with this very first link here, the syllabus. So if you click on the link with the syllabus, it will take you to our syllabus hosted on Dropbox, which looks like this. And as many syllabi are laid out, you'll have the basic class meeting times and details about how to contact me and things of that nature. And so I do recommend that you read the syllabus fully. Uh, and I recommend that for all your classes. Uh, the syllabus basically acts like a contract between the school and the student. And so the teacher puts out the syllabus and that explains how the class will work. And then if you stay in the class, you're kind of agreeing that that's the way you're gonna do things as a student in the class. And the teacher is agreeing that that's how they're gonna run the class. So it's good to look these through thoroughly. Um, a couple of things I'll draw your attention to in the syllabus, other than my email is here, my office, if you're on campus and you wanna see me in my office hours, all of that information is here. But the nature of this particular class, as we can see here, is that we only meet three times for exams. So we do not have regular meetings on campus, nor do we have regular meetings on Zoom for me to explain all the material. Uh, this is a fully online asynchronous class. And what that means is that I've set up all the materials and I've set up structure to try to help you learn the material, but that I'm not going to be gathering with you on regular times to explain everything. And so that's important to recognize. Sometimes people say, hey, I, I looked for you the following Saturday on Zoom uh, you know, to learn about chapter one or something. And we just don't have any meetings like that. So part of what you wanna do then today is get a clear idea of how to not only access assignments that you have to do before they're due, but also how to access the learning resources that you need to learn the material from before you can do the assignments successfully. So I'll be going over all of that uh, here today. But in, uh, in, um, in advance of the actual times that we meet, you can see the dates are listed here. And we will be meeting at the current time of this orientation, which has been set up for Saturday mornings for our three meetings on March 2nd, April 13th, and the last meeting on uh, May 11th for the final exam. And in each of these three times, we'll have first midterm one, then midterm two, then the final exam. And those are the only times we meet face to face. And the rest of all of the um, session time that you spend working on your material is on Canvas or in um, another website, my math lab. So my schedule is on the first page of the syllabus. So I am on campus two days a week, teaching classes, hosting office hours. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I have no classes, but I do hold office hour time from four to five on those two dates. And again, you don't have to make an appointment for any of these posted office hour times in my schedule. You can just show up. Then the other big thing I wanna draw your attention to in the syllabus, is I do have page two where I have an overlay explaining how the class is set up and how the class works. And I'm gonna to try to go over all of these things today with you so that you can get a great start in the class, but it is also written out in the syllabus if you forget some details or if I left you a little confused after today, then maybe some of the description here will help. 
And then after explaining how the class will work, there's a list of all of your assigned work for the entire semester on page three. Now you'll be able to see these due dates uh, on our website where our assignments are on my math lab as well. And I'll show you how all of that is set up. But nonetheless, in the syllabus, you can see all of these due dates listed here. Uh, and you'll see that other than the Saturday exams, all the rest of our work is always due at the very end of each week on Sunday. And so you see our very first things we're working toward are the quiz on the chapter P review and a test on chapter P. So chapter P, the P in this case kind of stands for prerequisite. So the very first chapter before chapter one, the introductory chapter to this course is designed to go through a review of some of the material that the book uh, kind of assumes that you know going in. So coming into this class pre-calculus, there's quite a bit of algebra that you might have been shown in high school or some other place in which you took what's normally referred to as algebra one and algebra two or things like that. And so there's a review of some of those topics in the first chapter. So we don't have a lot of time to spend going over that material. I certainly can't uh, set aside time for you to learn it as if you had never learned it before. You're supposed to know it coming in. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some things that people have forgotten or some things they need a refresher on to give them a good chance to not have that cause problems in this class. And so I did set up the first assignment for the first week to have students just try to go through the prerequisite review material in that very that chapter P. And then we have one quiz and one chapter test on that material. Then once we leave that behind, you can see then the following material, which typically has more things that might be new to you in it, is broken into sections of each chapter. And that means that it's expected that for each of these sections, you'll go through and watch videos and learn about the material and spend time absorbing it and practicing it so that you can then do these assignments successfully. Anyway, so there's a complete list of all the due dates for the entire semester. And in order to just keep reiterating what I think is the most important takeaway from today is the best defense against falling behind is to get ahead. So even though these assignments are due at the end of the week on Sunday, there's no reason not to try to see if you can finish up a particular week's assignments before Sunday. They're all available right now. Well, actually, I think I'm up through chapter five. I'm, I'm still finishing your assignments online as I'm creating them for the semester. But certainly you could get way ahead of these due dates. All of these assignments, all the way up through midterm one and even after that, are already available. And so you can work on them as soon as you feel ready and able to do so. And so I would recommend that you actually set goals for yourself if you, if you work that way to try to see if you can complete a particular week's assignments ahead of the, the due date at the end of the week. Like maybe you could get them done by Friday instead of by Sunday. And then you can start early on next week's assignments over the weekend. Whatever you wanna do, however you wanna work it, it is up to you. These are just recommendations to try to give you the best chance at success. So the syllabus is uh, always available. If you just follow the link on the homepage of our Canvas site, you can always go back and look up anything you need to in the syllabus. So having pointed out our syllabus to us, let's look at the next tab on the left. Below the Home tab is the Modules tab. So most classes set up in Canvas use modules as a way to set up the material for you. So I'm gonna show you, I've set up three modules for our class. Uh, the first module is entitled Introduction to Math 191. And so that gives an introduction to the class and these are the pages in that module. And so the first page has a copy of the welcome letter that I sent out the class to the class a week ago, just welcoming everybody and recommending that people try to go ahead and get a head start and get registered with my math lab and things like that. Then I have a meet your professor page where I just have a, a video, I think it's about 10 minutes long, in which I explain some of the things I've been talking about today already about the challenges of succeeding in an online math class and trying to get ahead and things like that. So, uh, and then we have a couple of pages here that have some of the key points from the syllabus about navigating the course and how the class works. 
and other things about course policies like the grading policies and things like that. And again, those are all in the syllabus. And it even says here, these are also in the syllabus. But I did want to have a copy of some of those key things on our Canvas site for easy access there as well. And then I have two links for resources. Uh, and there's also the DVC support hub over here. And I definitely recommend you explore or take a look at these resources that you have available to you. These are not specific to this class. These are in general things that I wanted to embed into the class to make it easy for students to find. But these are general resources like financial aid, uh, the DSS center, uh, technology loaners, like you can borrow a laptop or a calculator if you need things like that and don't have access to them. The school will loan you things like that. Uh, counseling services, healthcare services. There's a, there's a lot of things that the school is trying to supply to students to help give them every chance to succeed. And so these are some links to help you if you wanna navigate through some resources for help. So I recommend you, even if you don't think you need anything right now, which would be great, uh, you might want to just investigate these to just see sort of some of the things that are available to you. And all of these links will help with that. And so this introductory module that I set up in the beginning here, um, once you've gone through it, uh, through the pages in it and seeing what's there, you probably really won't use it much for the rest of the semester. It's really just designed to get you started. The same thing is true after the introduction with the getting started module. So in the getting started module, I'm basically describing how to get up and running in the class so you can start doing your work. And here's where we introduce this My Math Lab website. And so um, I was uh, able to send out an email a week ago and say, hey, go ahead and try to get started because these things are here to help students walk through the, the process uh, even before our orientation today. So if you've already looked through these, great. If not, just to give you an overview of what's here so that you can continue to use them as needed as you're getting going. The module starts with some learning objectives about what they're trying to accomplish in this module about getting you up and running in the class. By the end of this module, you will be able to access my math lab, at least on a free trial basis, find and access the various learning resources so you can start learning the math and then actually completing my math lab assignments and knowing how to do these things, because really that's what you need to be able to do to function in the class. So these are the learning objectives of this module. And then the very starting place with that is to get registered with my math lab. And so this is where you might actually uh, try to get something done while you're here with me today. For those at the orientation, if you watch this later, if you have not registered with my math lab, that is the very first thing you wanna do. And it usually just takes a few minutes. And so this page is designed to help you make sure you can get that out of the way because then you can get started functioning in the class. And again, initially the, the my math lab website will give you access for a trial period without any upfront cost. And it typically lasts for two weeks. So that means you could get going in the class. You could start looking at the book and practicing math problems or watching videos. Everything on the site is available to you during the free trial period, including the online textbook. Uh, and you can start doing your assignments before you've even fully committed to staying in the class. Maybe after a week, you're like, wow, I don't have, I don't have the... Uh, the time in my schedule to do all this work, or you know, I don't really like how this class is set up. If there's any reason you decided not to continue in the class after a week or two, if you just use this initial trial period, you wouldn't have paid a dime. Uh, and that's uh, and that's helpful too. Let's do it, says The Rock. Okay, so one of the things I wanna point out is that in, in order to encourage students to get ahead and to get started as soon as possible, I've put a little bit of an extra credit assignment here. And the extra credit assignment says that if you can simply get registered with my math lab by the end of the first official starting day of the classes, which is this coming Monday, the 22nd, if you can take the three to five minutes it usually takes to register with my math lab by Monday at midnight or before then, then as an extra credit bonus, I'm going to give you a 100% score bump on any of the online assignments of your choice. 
This is not a midterm, but any of the assignments, which means quizzes or chapter tests. And the chapter test can be challenging sometimes. It's a whole, whole chapter covered on one assignment. So it might be nice if one didn't go very well for you, that you had a backup that you knew you could just bump it to 100%. If you have already registered with my math lab, as several students already have in this class, then you've already locked in this extra credit. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to claim it. What's going to happen is early Tuesday morning, uh, after the expiration of midnight on Monday night has passed, I'm just going to uh, make take a list of everyone who's registered in my math lab at that time, and they all get the extra credit. And then typically what I'll do at the end of the semester is I'll go through and see the student's lowest score online and use their extra credit to bump that to 100 for them when I'm getting ready to do grades. And that's when they get their bump. Because at that time, we know what's the best place to use the extra credit. All right, so there's a handout sheet here that's a PDF attachment here with a link that has step-by-step -step instructions that show you how to get registered with the My Math Lab site. I'm gonna go ahead and try to show you what it looks like uh, while we're here together. And if you have not yet registered with My Math Lab, I would recommend while we're sitting here together in this orientation, you go ahead and do it. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, and I'm gonna show you the steps to do it. So you could just do it right now and get the uh, extra credit assignment done and, and start the class off great if you haven't already registered. Okay, so what's the process look like to get registered with my math lab and be able to see where the textbook and all the assignments are? Well, there's a link over here to take you there in general from our Canvas site. It says My Lab and Mastering. It's the one right below the modules. So if I click on that tab, then there's a link up here to open My Lab and Mastering. Now, if you are not already registered, it might not say this because you have to sort of connect to it. I'm not sure what it says for students. I'm in the student view. But if you are not registered and you follow the link that's up here over to my math lab, then it will start the registration process for you. Now it's going into the site already because it already knows me and I'm already registered, but I did set aside what it looks like. So let me go back. So when you follow this link over here, the link here from our Canvas site takes you to my math lab and then my math lab knows you're in this class and it knows which my math lab class you're trying to go for. Earlier, I had some students ask and it's often students think they need a student, uh, a course ID number because if you're trying to register in my math lab and you haven't gone through our Canvas site, my math lab doesn't know what class you wanna register and they ask you to identify it with a course ID. But if you're on my math lab and it's asking you for a course ID, that means that you have not followed this linked process and that's what you need to do. So <clears throat> the way to get to my math lab and have them know which class you want to register in is to go to our Canvas site, click on my lab and mastering, then click on the link in the top center of the page here and go to my math lab that way. If you do that, what it will typically show you is First of all, like a big page with a bunch of paragraphs that are basically having you sign your rights away to your firstborn child or something. They basically say you agree to abide by the website's rules as you use it, not steal their material, things like that. But then once you agree to that, they already know which class that you want. They will simply ask you if you want to log into the site, if you've used them before, or if you want to register with the site. Registering with my math lab will mean you give them your email, your name, um, you answer some security questions. That's the where the three to five minutes might come into play. And you basically sign up for their site like you would sign up to Facebook or any other website that you were going to for the first time that you were creating an account there. And then if you sign up for the site, it will then offer you some options and that I can show you. So let's say you went through the little registration process. Then you'll get a page something like this. They already know which class you want. They know you want pre-calculus, my section that I've created. And so these options are designed to have them charge you for gaining access to the site. On the site is a complete copy of the textbook. There's a whole bunch of videos that they've created to help you learn the material. All of our web, all of our assignments and practice problems are there. So this is them basically selling their authored material to you. 
Now there, I wasn't able to show an access for the free trial, which is usually right here. I'm wondering if they've changed that recently. I do see if I click over on this help link here that they mentioned the temporary access. It says if here- If I may, Professor, sorry. Yeah, yeah thanks for sharing. It's, yeah, it's there because I just clicked on the free one. It's below the, the what you're right. showing. Okay, I think again, that's probably because this I'm going here with a false student page and there's no actual link here. Yeah, so it usually it's right here and it says get temporary access and that's how you get the two weeks for free. But you can also see what ultimately your options are here. And so the cheapest option is to just go for this $80 and it'll give you an 18 week subscription, which will obviously cover this entire semester. And then you have access to everything you need. You don't need to buy a different calculator in this class. You don't need to buy a physical copy of the textbook because the textbook is on the website. You can use it there if you want. However, it is still an option to buy the book and not pay for access directly this way. If you buy a book, the requirement will need to be that you need to buy a book that comes with an access code for the site. That may mean that you need to buy the book new instead of buying a nice cheaper used one. So that's going to maybe cost a little bit more money or maybe a lot more money, depending somebody, if you had a friend who had the book and wanted to just give it to you, unfortunately, you still need to gain access to the site. So the only real requirement for this class is access to the site because that's where all your assignments are. And so you need to be on the site functioning. However, if you go to the bookstore, for example, some people who are on financial aid, they get book vouchers to help them buy books, then you could go buy the book from our bookstore and it will come with an access code wrapped in or packaged with it. And then you'd go here and say, oh, I have an access code that came with the book. You'd click on this, you'd give them the access code, and then you get access to the site for the semester and you don't have to pay the 80 bucks. So those are kind of your options, but as I pointed out, you don't need to take any of these paid options up front. You can start with the free trial and then figure out later if you're going to continue in the class, what's the best paid option to keep your access on the site. Once you pay or do the free trial, you then are registered in the site. And then if you, it'll take you to uh, a homepage where you click on the class, and then you should see this homepage for our class. So that going through this process and getting here, whether it's free or whether it's paid, getting that done by Monday at midnight is the extra credit assignment. Once you are on this page and you can see you're in the class, you've completed the extra credit. You don't need to tell me about it or submit it anywhere. You've done it. Are there any questions at all about how to gain access or get registered with my math lab? Anything I should review or explain better? All right, well, if you think of something later, feel free to shout it out. Even if it's after this orientation is done, feel free to send me an email. There's nothing more important for this class than getting registered as soon as you can, because then you can begin moving forward, learning the material, working on assignments and everything you need to do to get started. So I'm gonna explain a lot of the options on this site shortly, but let me just go back to our uh, Canvas page to finish looking at what's here. Most of the time, going back to our modules, most of the time you're actually not going to be using our Canvas site during the semester. As I've been saying, this first module is to introduce you to the class and has some details about how it works. The second module, as we're seeing here, is about getting up and running and getting registered in my math lab, as we see for this little extra credit assignment. And then it's about getting started learning the material and doing, uh, doing assignments. And this is an introduction, but all of these things will take place on my math lab. So let's see what it looks like. It says learning pre-calculus, getting started. So in order to prepare to do your first assignments, which are due a week from tomorrow on the prerequisite chapter, you'll want to look over the material. If I was teaching this class face-to-face -face, during that first week, I would review a bunch of prerequisite topics in class and go over lots of example problems for practice. And then you would go off and work on your homework or something like that, or you your, have a quiz on it. But we're not meeting at all. So all of this will need to take place on your own. So how is it that you can do that? Well, 
you could open up the book and start reading chapter P in the book and see if it looks familiar. They give example problems. So just like the, the long st standing approach to any math class before the digital age, there's a book, there's problems in it. You can practice those problems. You can read the book, things like that. However, in place of our regular face-to-face -face meetings that we might normally have in a standard lecture class, there's section lecture videos that you can watch on the website. I'm going to show you how to access those when we go back, back to my math lab. There's even animations. There's the textbook, as I mentioned here. They have PowerPoint summaries of sections as well, which I often might use in a class to go over the material. So there's a lot of resources where you can expose yourself to the math topics that you want to learn by watching videos, by looking at the textbook and things like that. And that's where you would begin normally for chapter P. So this page is just introducing you to this idea and walking you through to the process, suggesting that you get started. There's a little video here showing you how to access learning resources on the website. You can refer back to this. I'm going to show you that uh, in this orientation, but there's a video here to give you a quick reminder of how that works. So that's in this page of the module. In the next page, then it says, all right, let's go ahead and get started on an assignment. And so when you're thinking about now actually doing math assignments in my math lab, we want to show you what that looks like. So this is not a video that I've made, but that's provided by my math lab that just shows what it's like doing math problems on their site, entering answers, things like that. Now, I actually believe the my math lab website is the most user friendly math website for doing work that I've ever encountered in my 20 years. And I've, I've seen a lot of them. So most students can just kind of go there and start working and it's pretty self-explanatory. However, there's a nice little short video here if you want to get little uh, indicators of like how to enter fractions and things like that when that comes up when you're doing problems. So how to enter answers in a My Math Lab assignment. There's a little video here. And then it says, if you haven't started learning the material, go do it now and I'll wait until you've done that. And now we'll talk about how to get doing an, on an assignment. And so there's just a description to try to explain and encourage you to get going, read the material, get a great start in the class. Then there's a little discussion just about the nature of our chapter tests, midterms, and the final exam, about how they're a little different than your practice problems and your quizzes and things like that. These details are also in the syllabus. And that's where those first tool modules basically finish out. There's a couple of con uh, uh, conclusions made on the very last page. So I went through this a little briefly with highlighting some of the key things here, but it is here for you to review at whatever pace makes sense to you. Maybe it's already clear to you. Once you get going, you probably will never return to these two first modules. So the only other thing I really wanted to show you for this class is this final module videos, and then the fact that there's a discussion board and net tutoring available and DVC tutoring available as well. So let's uh, go over these last few things and then we'll take a look at the My Math Lab site after that. So I have some videos posted here, but you'll see the page simply says Willet Trigonometry Tutorials. So I have not taught this particular class in several years, pre-calculus. I've taught it many times before, but not in the last several years. And so I don't really have any video materials that I've prepared specifically going over pre-calculus. Luckily, the My Math Lab website has a ton of them, and I'll show you how to access them, and I think they're, they're quite good. Um, however, I did shoot videos of me explaining everything in a trigonometry course. In fact, I'm teaching a couple of sections of that this semester. We have, as I mentioned, um, earlier in our before orientation questionnaire questioning, we have three chapters that review trigonometry. For some students, they took trigonometry, maybe even last semester, maybe recently, they, they may remember it well. And if that's the case, those three, three chapters will probably be very easy for you because there's nothing new in them. But if you never really learned trigonometry, never had it at all, or never learned it well, those chapters can be challenging because they review all of trigonometry in just a few chapters. So I did post up here my videos that I created teaching trigonometry. So 
in that trigonometry class, there were seven chapters. We spent a whole semester on it. And these are everything that I covered during that semester. So there's a lot here, but they are labeled by their topic, like radian measure, sum and difference identities, law of sines, law of cosines, things like that. So if you are struggling or you're worried about the trigonometry review that we're going to do in this class because you don't really remember it or never had trigonometry, then some of these videos may be of help because they go into a lot more depth and detail. The book thinks you've had trigonometry already, meaning the book for our class, because it just reviews it. So it does go through things kind of quickly, and we've paced our class to go through those chapters kind of quickly because they're supposed to be just review. And we don't have time to spend a whole semester on those three chapters. So I want to point that out because this may be a resource that some of you don't need to use at all, but it may be a resource that's really helpful for those of you that are struggling with the trig part of our class. And that's why I posted up here on our Canvas site. All right, so now that we've looked at the three modules that I have, the two to get started, and then some trig videos, if you want to watch those at some point, I do have a discussion board. Normally, if we have a face-to-face -face class, students have a chance to see each other when we meet for class, to talk with each other, sometimes to work in groups to discuss the material. Working with peers can be really, really helpful part of the learning process, but we don't have those meetings in this online class. So what we have here as a possible way for students to interact with each other is a discussion board. And I've organized it sort of discussion boards to introduce people to each other about chapter P because some people breeze through that well, but other people really have a struggles with it. And then I've broken it into various chapters. These are the chapters for midterm one. These are the, chap the new chapters before midterm two. And then these are the chapters that we do before the final. And so I've broken it into these three sections, and then I had a discussion board I made just for preparing for the final exam. Sometimes people like to have study groups. I've seen people use the discussion board to, to work out uh, carpools to the final <laughs> or to midterms or things like that. So I'm not going to force you to use this. This is just for you to make use of if it's helpful to you. Um, I do recommend students try to interact with each other. You guys are all in the same boat, working on the same things. You can help each other and learn a lot from each other. But I'm not going to create assignments that force you to use these things. Some teachers really like, like have some assignments where your assignment is to go and post an introduction on the discussion board. Uh, for those of you who are used to that, that will not take place in this class. So it may be that students don't use this at all. I hope students get some use out of it because it can be helpful, but I'm not going to mandate that or put that as part of your graded structure. So the discussions boards are here if you are interested. So the last thing to point out about our Canvas site is when you want tutoring help. So there's two primary options for tutoring. There's Net Tutor and there's DVC Tutor. The DVC tutoring is by far my number one recommendation. So if I click on that and you open this in a new tab, this takes you to the basically uh, the, the overall campus tutoring resource site. The one that you would want is math and engineering, which is this red gear wheel here. Of course, you if you're taking other classes, the, all of these give you access to tutoring for other classes as well. So this is a fantastic resource. All the tutoring at DVC is free. And you can get basically unlimited one-on-one -on -one tutoring for the entire semester. This is particularly helpful when we don't have classroom sessions for you guys to get help from me and, and to work with each other on a regular basis. So if you click on that, you will see they have um, their hours of operation. They have when you can get tutoring. I will point out that you can come on campus and simply drop into the tutoring center any time, and they're open, I believe, let's see if we have the center hours here, Monday through Thursday, 12 hours a day, eight in the morning till eight at night, and even another four hours on Friday. So that's great. Any of, any of these hours, you can just go there and walk in and get help from the tutors. And in the tutoring center, there's lots of computers. So if you want, you could go over there and work on your math on one of the computers on my math lab. And then when you get stuck, you can walk over and get help for free from the tutors immediately. It's a great way to guarantee you're going to make progress. So I definitely recommend for any of you folks who are coming to campus regularly, I recommend that you just 
schedule yourself some time to spend in the math and engineering service center or the math lab every week and go in there. Even if you don't have questions going in, you can just work at the computer. And then if you do run into questions, the tutors are right there and able to help you. Or you could just go in there and sign up to get some help from tutors immediately. But on top of that, you don't have to be there on campus in person. There's also a Zoom room for tutoring. So you can get help one-on-one -on -one from tutors from home using Zoom like we are now. This is a fantastic resource. The math department has spent a lot of time and effort to make it welcoming and to try to give students the help they need to, to survive a challenging math class. We want you to succeed, and this is a fantastic resource to use, and I recommend you use it multiple times each week if you can find time to do so. In, un, in any event, so that's the big thing is this DVC tutoring. You can access it here if you're online, or you can just on campus go to the, the site itself and walk in and, and get help. Now, the other thing, this net tutor link is also very helpful. Students have reported back to me that they like it. It is a third party tutoring service. So it's basically a company which provides online tutoring and DVC has prepaid for all students to get, I believe up to 20 hours of free tutoring for the semester. And if you imagine a, a, an average tutoring session taking 20 or 30 minutes, that means that you're, you have already paid for you by DVC 40 to 60 free tutoring sessions with NetTutor in which you just follow this link, go over to their site and ask for help and say what topic you need help on and they'll connect you with a tutor. Now, I think the DVC tutoring is better and I believe the net tutoring might be limited to only hours when the DVC tutoring is not available because DVC does have to pay for this separately. So they may want you to use our DVC tutoring first but that means that this is available in the evenings, on the weekends. So if you're working on a Saturday, trying to complete your stuff by Sunday at midnight and you're struggling, well, the net tutoring is available all day Saturday, 24 hours. And so that's a free prepaid use of math tutoring for you. Any questions about our Canvas site or the resources that are available here to you uh, for this class? Questions at all about our Canvas site before we switch over to my math lab? 